Welcome to our fifth webinar on top fiber questions to our technical support team. My name is Wayne Allen. I'm the regional marketing engineer for Fluke Networks in the Asia Pacific region, and I will be your host for today's webinar. Today we are going to look at how to set a one jumper reference correctly and how to verify your test reference cords to ensure your measurements are valid. We will look at referencing using a light source and power meter first, and then we'll follow that with the referencing of an optical loss test set. If you look at the major premises fiber optic test standards available, the preferred and recommended reference method is the one jumper method. There are other methods such as the three jumper method that do have a place when measuring MPO MPT trunks. However, the two jumper method should never be used for testing premises cabling. You will end up with the wrong results. Before attempting any fiber loss measurements, you need a correct reference. It's the most critical part of making the measurement. First step, and very important, you need to let the light source and power meter stabilize as per the manufacturer's recommendations. Not allowing instruments to stabilize is the biggest source of gains in loss measurements. The next step in the reference process is to use the jumper cord to set the reference. The cord needs to be a test reference cord, and we sometimes refer to these as TRCs, not a patch cord. You can't use patch cords for making good loss measurements. Patch cords contribute too much loss, and that's the problem. Test reference cords contribute very little loss. Less than 0.1 of a dB for multi-mode cords, and 0.2 dB for single mode cords. For multi-mode measurements, your launch conditions also need to meet the encircle flux requirements. Using the correct cords as recommended by the instrument manufacturer will ensure that you can meet encircle flux requirements. As you can see here in our diagram, our source output is connected to our power meter input using a test reference cord. The input connector on the power meter should be the same as the connectors used in the system under test. So if you've got LCs, you need an LC adapter on the input of the power meter. If you're testing SC terminated fibers, you need an SC connector on the input of the power meter. But before you connect anything, make sure you inspect and clean, if necessary, all the connections. Make certain the instrument ports are clean, as well as the test reference cord connectors. A dirty source port can limit the amount of light energy available to make your measurement. And if you're unsure how to do this, Fluke Networks has video tutorials available on the correct inspection and cleaning methods on our YouTube channel. Once your instrument is stable and you have inspected and cleaned your cords if necessary, connect the source to the power meter and make sure that you do that in the right manner as shown here and go ahead and set your reference. Once you have set your reference, you also need to verify or, or validate, if you like, the receive cord. The receive cord must also be a test reference grade cord to ensure accurate loss measurements. Remember from our last slide, test reference cords have low loss so as not to contribute to the overall loss measurement you are making. Disconnect the jumper cord 
from the power meter. Never break at the source connection. If you break the connection at the source, you have to go and set the reference again. Connect the receive cord to the power meter. Connect the jumper and the receive cords together as shown in the diagram here. We're using a blue single mode adapter as we find single mode adapters lead to a better overall reference result. Also make certain the receive cord connectors are clean before you connect the cord into make a measurement. Once you have the jumper cord and receive cord connected together, you'll be able to measure the loss of the mated cords. For multi-mode fibre measurements, the loss reading should be below 0.15 dB. If you're validating single mode cords, the loss reading should be no more than 0.25 dB. You've probably noticed here we have a little bit extra 0.05 dB allowed. This takes into account field conditions because there's a little bit of uncertainty when you're doing it in the field. If the measured results are below our suggested limits, your cords are, good, are in good shape and you, you will be making valid measurements. If the measured losses are above the suggested limits, re-clean the field connectors. And as part of that cleaning, also inspect to confirm they are clean and give it a try again. If you cannot achieve the suggested loss values for the mated cords, you really need to consider replacing the cords because they may be worn out. Because if you can't get low mated results when you're verifying or validating the cords, you are not going to get good test results. If your reference is poor and your cords are poor, you are going to get poor measurement results. And we really don't want that. When you have finished setting your reference and verifying or validating your test reference cords, you are ready to make your loss measurements. Break the cords at the coupler and connect the source to one end of the fiber under test. The power meter, of course, is connected to the other end. And you can see this arrangement here in the diagram. The source to the left, the power meter to the right. Once connected, you are now ready to measure and record your loss results. Things change a little bit when you get to an optical loss test set. When using an optical loss test set like Fluke Network 35 or Pro, the process is a little bit more complex. Optical loss test sets you test fibers as a pair. So you also set references as a pair. This means you have four test reference cords rather than two reference cords. And if you're testing multi-mode fiber, remember the launch cords must be in circle flux compliant. Now, lucky for the technician who's using a 35 Pro, referencing is easy because we've built in a guided wizard. So when you're ready to start, all you need to do is hook up your launch cords. And you can see here we have our launch cords in position. And we just follow on in the graphic as we step through the process. So our next step is to connect our source or output to our input. And as you can see here on this graphic, the output from my main is connected to the input on the remote. The output on my remote is connected to the input of my main. So I'm now ready to set a reference. And down in the bottom right-hand corner of the graphic, it says set reference. 
So if we hit set reference, the tester will go off and set a reference and it will advise us if the reference was good or there was an issue with the reference process. So if the reference was good, it'll take us to the next step. So we now need to verify our cords or, or validate our test reference cords. So the instrument will guide us through. We have all four test reference cords now situated on the tester. And we move to the next step. We connect our cords together, just like we did with light source and power meter. And now we're ready to do a test reference cord verification. So the instrument gives us the prompt down the bottom there. And as you can see, TRC verification. Once we've com completed the verification, the instruments will give us a reading on that verification result. So it gives us the date and time of the verification plus the loss recorded. As you can see here, our first chord set had a loss of 0 0.08 dB. Our second chord set had a loss of 0 0.03 dB. And if you remember from we were talking about light source and power meter, we said for multi-mode, and this is multi-mode, better than 0.15 of a dB. And that's what we have here. So these cords are good to go. So we're ready to make a measurement. And if you're using an optical loss set, test set for single mode, it's 0.25 of a dB for the referencing check or TRC validation check before you proceed to actually making the measurement. Well, that's all I have for you in this webinar. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us at apacmarketing at flukenetworks.com. We also have an ebook available on our top fiber questions. If you would like a copy, just go to the web address below, www.flukenetworks.com, request top fiber questions digital handbook. With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention today and hope to see you on our next webinar.